In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we come together to worship on this Remembrance Sunday, we are reminded of humanity's inhumanity, of our willingness to offend against God's peace, of our willingness to go to war with one another and cause untold misery. But we're reminded also of God's love the love of Christ, the love that gives its life for another. So let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil distortions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for all his children. Lord, you are gracious and compassionate. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are loving to all and your mercy is over all your creation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your faithful servants bless your name and speak of the glory of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray for the peace of God's world. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Now we go to your homes as we share in our readings today. Reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 70. The response is, You are my helper and deliverer. O Lord, make haste to help me. 
you are my helper and deliverer. O Lord, make haste to help me. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. You are my helper and deliverer. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who say to me, Aha, and gloat over me, turn back, because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. You are my helper and deliverer. O Lord, make haste to help me. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. You are my helper and deliverer. O Lord, make haste to help me. Second reading. The first, uh, first Thessalonians 4, chapter 4, 13 to 18. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, though through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you, to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are all alive are left until the coming of the Lord. By no means precede, precede those who have died, but the Lord himself with a cry of command and the archangel's call and the sound of God's trumpet will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever and therefore encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke this parable to the disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God the Creator, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit the Comforter. Amen. This period of remembrance is a difficult time for many. Last week our thoughts were with those we love but see no more. On All Saints Day, 
there are all manner of emotions which are heightened, and none more so than when we commemorate those who have died in war or as a result of warfare. We recall lives which have been lost in conflicts between our own and other nations. We symbolise this with the wearing of the red poppies as a symbol of the blood shed and the blossom of life resurrected. Our scripture readings remind us of unsettling times in the past. The prophet Amos in the 8th century before Christ re-envisions the Lord, day of the Lord, not as a joyful event to be looked forward to, but as a challenging day of judgment. He acknowledges that, though Israel does offer worship to God, this is unacceptable if it's not matched with justice. Then we hear in the letter to the Thessalonians, Paul is dealing with concerns expressed. Neither he nor Jesus, God's son, have come back before some of their number have died. It is describing a time of waiting and hoping, with no certainty of the outcome, it appears to them. Even the tale of the ten bridesmaids contains a warning about being prepared, ready and staying alert. In this case, you might think of Jesus the bridegroom and the church as his bride, a sort of metaphor for the second coming of Christ at an unknown day or hour. So how can we weave together these elements of chastisements, warning and waiting into the messages of expectation and hope at this time of remembrance, especially in these sad, uncertain and very challenging days? We are in, in between a state of despair and hope, of challenge and expectation. This is a time when, as in a time of warfare, death is all too prevalent, intertwined with a time of waiting and the eager anticipation for the opportunity to live, to, opportunity to live lives to the full again. Those who went to war on our behalf were also at that crossroads between death and life, despair and hope. Through the words of three soldiers who are recounting their experiences as a form of remembrance, I hope we can gain some depth of empathy, some understanding of the courage of those who face danger and death in the name of peace and justice. The first soldier I would like us to listen to is Harry Patch. He was born in 1898 and died in 2009. He died at the ripe old age of 111, and for a time he was the oldest man in Europe. He fought in the trenches on the Western Front, and he became the longest surviving combat soldier of World War I. He said, When the war ended, I don't know if it was more, I was more relieved that we'd won, or that I didn't have to go back. Passchendaele was a disastrous battle. Thousands and thousands of young lives were lost. It makes me angry. Earlier this year, I went back to Ypres to shake the hand of Charles Kuntz, Germany's oldest surviving veteran from the war. It was emotional. He's 107. We've had 87 years to think what war is. To me, it's a licence to go out and murder. Why should the British government call me up and take me out to a battlefield to shoot a man I never knew, whose language I couldn't speak? All those lives lost for a war finished over a table. Now what is the sense in that? There was a piece read out at his funeral, which was an extract from his book, The Last Fighting Tommy. 
we came across a lad from A Company. He was ripped open from his shoulder to his waist by shrapnel and lying in a pool of blood. When we got to him, he said, shoot me. He was beyond human help. And before we could even draw a revolver, he was dead. The final word he uttered was, Mother. I remember that lad in particular. It's an image that has haunted me all my life, seared into my mind. Harry's funeral was held at Wells Cathedral and the bells were rung 111 times, once for each year of his life. It was, however, a theme of service that was peace and reconciliation, and his coffin was accompanied by two soldiers from each of the armies of Belgium, France and Germany. It is wonderful that coming together such as that of nations took place at his funeral. But somehow, the futility of warfare seems to be the dominant message of the life of Harry Patch. Remembrance Day is not a day when we glorify war. It's a day when we remind ourselves of the waste of life. Then I listened to the words of squadron leader George Leonard, Johnny Johnson, MBE, a Royal Air Force pilot who fought and flew and served in 617 Squadron in the Dan Busters Raid of 1943. When he received his MBE at Buckingham Palace, he reflected on the war and the fact that over 55,000 men were killed in Bomber Command. He said that they did not die in vain. Their lives were given for freedom. We should not abuse that freedom, but honour it respectfully with the justice that their sacrifices deserve. Of course, if the war had been lost, then who knows how many more innocent lives would have been ended in gas chambers and ovens and concentration camps and other atrocities. There is a time when, as a last resort, war becomes a necessity, when out of love for humanity, we are prepared, undaunted, to make the final sacrifice. Finally, I was reminded of the story of Eric Lomax. He was a soldier which was captured by the Japanese in 1941 and was put to work on the railway through the Burmese jungle. He was accused of being a spy and sent to the Japanese Army Secret Police. His interrogator explained to him, on arrival at the prison camp in 1943, Lomax, you will be called, killed shortly, whatever happens. But it will be to your advantage in the time remaining to you to tell the whole truth. You know how we can deal with people when, wished, when we wish to be unpleasant. Eric Lomax somehow survived an ordeal so unspeakable when he was later transferred to Singapore's notorious Shangi prison, he described it as heaven. After the war, like so many of those who have survived the atrocities of Japanese captivity, he could barely discuss his experiences with anyone. He bottled it all up. And through it all, he retained a loathing for the Japanese, particularly the infernal interrogator, still haunting his dreams with the same words, Lomax, you will tell us. Yet, nearly 50 years on, an old comrade of Lomax sent him a cutting from an English language paper in Japan. It was about a repentant Japanese soldier 
who was suffering painful flashbacks and making up for his country's treatment of prisoners of war. Eric Nomax recognised with astonishment that this was his former interrogator, Nagasi Takashaki. Encouraged by his wife in 1993, it was that the two men were finally reunited on the fabled bridge across the River Kwai. Takashi bowed and nervously began a lengthy apology. I am very, very sorry, he told Mr Lomax. I never forgot you. We treated your countrymen very, very badly. It was a therapeutic process and later Eric Lomax accepted an invitation to visit Takashi in Japan, where he finally, formally, forgave him reading out a letter saying as much. I've had proved for myself, he said, that remembering is not enough if it simply hardens hate. And Takashi said, I think I can die safely now. After all he went through in life, perhaps there could be no better epitaph for Mr Lomax than the last line he wrote in his book. Sometime the hating has to stop. The reason we remember the horrors of war at Remembrance Day is not to glorify war. It is for the same reason that we remember the Holocaust. To remember the terrible mistakes of the past and the sacrifices which were made before good triumphed over evil. It's also a day in which we commit ourselves to be part of the process of change as we commit ourselves to live for peace and reconciliation. As Christians, we bear a particular responsibility to demonstrate the difference trusting in God can make to our world. As the prophet Amos urged, we should seek justice. As Jesus teaches, we need to be ready and alert to the opportunities to respond to God's call. And as the Apostle Paul encourages, we are to trust in God's promises, even in difficult and uncertain times, knowing that Jesus died and rose again. At the heart of God's love is forgiveness and that is the most challenging part of being a foot soldier of Christ. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, as the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the leaders of the nations, that you will guide them in the ways of freedom, justice and truth. This time we pray for the leaders of the United States, for the government of this nation and the nations of Europe, for all those seeking to balance the needs of their lands the protection of their people and the economies of their countries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who bear arms on behalf of the nation, that they may have discipline and discernment, courage and compassion. Pray for all those places in the world where there is conflict, that they may be brought Christ's peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our enemies and those who wish us harm, that you turn the hearts of all to kindness and friendship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the wounded and the captive, the grieving and the homeless, that in all their trials they may know your love and support. Pray for the Royal British Legion and all who seek to bring comfort and support to those injured and affected by war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most holy God and Father, hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who fight for justice. Help us who today remember the cost of war to work for a better tomorrow. And as we commend to you lives lost in terror and conflict, bring us all in the end to the peace of your presence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and to praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendour and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us, dying for his own. He set us free from the bonds of sin that we might rise and reign with him in glory. 
On the night he gave up himself for us all. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with Mary, the mother of God, Mary Magdalene, the apostles and all your saints, at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection, in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. United in the company of all the saints, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. God of peace, whose Son Jesus Christ proclaimed the kingdom and restored the broken to wholeness of life, look with compassion on the anguish of the world and by your healing power make whole both people and nations through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May Christ, who makes saints of sinners, who has transformed those we remember today, raise and strengthen you that you may transform the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.